Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I am going to read out of Think on These Things, Wisdom for Life from Proverbs by Ray Comfort. I do have from the 19th until today, the 22nd, to read. Um, I have been studying something pretty in-depth, and so I have not been able to read but I'm going to try to catch up on the reading for you today, okay? Uh, December 19th. Greed is not good. He covets greedily all the day long, but the righteous gives and does not spare. That's in Proverbs 21, 26. In the 1987 movie Wall Street, actor Michael Douglas made a speech that epitomized this world's ethics. He said, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all of its forms, greed for life, greed for money, for love, knowledge, has marked the upward surge of mankind, unquote. These words are revealing. Darwinian evolution is a vain attempt to try to rid ourselves of the moral law because it, among other things, encourages greed. Greed is not good. It destroys family, and it has marked the downward surge of humankind. Guard against covetous greed and ambition by having a financially generous spirit. Soul Search How do I feel about gambling and winning large amounts of money? Have ever wished to do either? Father, keep me from the sin of greed. Amen. I'm just going to continue on this reading up to 22. December 20th. Good works, no God. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with wicked intent? Proverbs 21:27. The basis of all the great religions is something that is commonly called good works righteousness. The ungodly think they can make some sort of sacrifice either with religions or good works to please God. The belief that separates Christianity from these religions is the moral law. It shows us the nature and leaves us all as guilty criminals before the judgment bar of a holy God. The law shows that our good works are nothing but an attempt to bribe the judge of the universe, and God will not be bribed. In Christianity, God provided the payment himself in the form of the cross on Calvary. The one thing that can now save us is the mercy of the judge, and that's what we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Soul Search how often do I pray for the millions who are religious and yet hopeless in their quest for immortality? Prayer Father, I cry out for your mercy to be extended to those who are seeking salvation. Amen. December 21st Ears to hear A false witness shall perish, but the man who hears him will speak endlessly. Proverbs 21, verse 28. The scriptures refer to Jesus as the faithful and true witness. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. May we be the same, both faithful and true. Too many who call themselves Christians today are not true and faithful to preach about sin and to warn the wicked of the reality of hell. However, those who fear God will say with the Apostle Paul, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Few people nowadays know the terror of the Lord. The image they have of our Creator is one of a benevolent father figure with no sense of justice or righteousness. Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew chapter 11, verse 15. If we have heard the thunderings of God's law, and if we have seen the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ, we will tremble and say with the apostle, We cannot but speak the things which we have heard and seen. Acts chapter 4 verse 20. 
soul search. What do I experience when I think of my sinful desires? Do I tremble at the thought of them? Prayer Father, I say that I cannot but speak of that which I have seen and heard. No, I'm, I'm sorry I said that wrong. Father, may I say that I cannot but speak of that which I have seen and heard. Amen. And December 22nd, Sheep and Goats. A wicked man hardened his face, hardens his face, but as for the upright, he establishes his way. Proverbs twenty one twenty nine. Sheep and goats have some interesting differences. The main one is that goats are stubborn. They are not easily led like sheep. Goats are naturally independent, while sheep have an instinct to gather together in a flock. The Bible likens false converts to goats. They secretly hold on to their own rebellious will. They call Jesus Lord, but refuse to do the things he tells them to do. The parable of the sower makes it clear that the true church is made up of true and false converts. Jesus referred to the false as goats amid the sheep, tares among the wheat, bad fish among the good, the foolish virgins among the wise, and said they will be separated on the day of judgment. See Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. It is therefore wise for each of us to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Do we harden our face to the voice of the Good Shepherd? Or do we direct our way in obedience to his every word? Soul Search Am I a sheep or a goat? And why? Prayer Father, make me one who hears your voice and follows you. Amen. Amen. That, my friends, is very powerful. That is something we all need to address ourselves and to examine ourselves and to know. You don't want to find out on the day of judgment that you were a goat the whole time you thought you were a sheep. Humble yourselves before the Lord. That is what's most important. I love you all so very, very much. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your nose in the book, which is the Word of God. And embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God. I love you all so very, very much.